I'm sure by now most of you have heard of the multiverse idea. The idea involving not just one universe where we live, but potentially a lot of other universes that we're just not able to see for one reason or another. And although the concept of the multiverse for the most part became famous because of various science fiction movies, including of course superhero movies, unfortunately when it comes to actual science, at the moment there is really no evidence for anything. And more importantly, the idea of the multiverse technically describes completely different phenomena. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video I wanted to discuss one of the recent announcements about a potential experiment that's actually going to try to find out if the multiverse exists, but also briefly discuss certain misconceptions about the multiverse and focus on what evidence we might already have today. But first of all, let's I guess start with the misconceptions and with the basic definitions. So, multiverse. Not to be confused with the parallel universe, not to be confused with other types of multiverses. Because by itself, the title multiverse does not explain what theory it actually connects to. And the multiverse that we usually see in various science fiction movies is usually based on quantum physics. It's better well known by the term many worlds. And here it suggests that every time something quantum happens to a typical particle, it tends to collapse into various probabilities creating completely different outcomes. Or I guess in other words, when we measure something and when the quantum world becomes real world, at least in theory, it basically creates different versions of different worlds that we're just not able to observe. And by itself, this is an interesting interpretation of quantum effects and quantum physics, but once again, there is no evidence, no proof. And though it does supposedly create the multiverse as well, here proving this would be extremely challenging. Because there's absolutely no way we can ever detect these parallel universes using modern physics, using modern technology. But then there's also the idea of inflationary multiverse, and this is a little bit different. It's something that was originally proposed back in the 80s by Andre Lind and Alan Goth, and all of this was a result of the inflationary theory which was proposed by several scientists. Now in short, the cosmological idea of inflation in essence tries to explain why the entire universe appears kind of smooth and kind of flat, as if it suddenly expanded extremely quickly not so long after it was formed 13.8 billion years ago. It's not actually entirely clear why it happened, but it's the only way to make sense of current observations of the oldest light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background. Today it's believed that we might get some answers about this once there are even older discoveries from, for example, gravitational waves, but at the moment this is all we have. And so we know that in a tiny, tiny fraction of a second, the universe potentially expanded, increasing in size by a dramatic amount. But when the scientists were exploring this idea, they realized that, well, first of all, why exactly did it stop? As a matter of fact, maybe it only stopped in our universe with the rest of the area still inflating even now. And more importantly, it also suggested that there could be other similar areas where the inflation suddenly stopped forming separate individual bubbles that in some sense we refer to as the universe. And so the idea of this inflationary multiverse, that's what a lot of modern physicists are trying to learn about, trying to prove or disprove, and essentially are trying to understand in order to learn more about the timeline of the universe we live in. But we only can obviously do that if we discover any one of these other bubbles, other universes. And in this case, the theoretical assumption is that this inflationary space would make these bubbles separate extremely quickly with none of them potentially interacting with one another. And so there would not be really any effects of one of these universes on the other. Except that maybe some cases, maybe in some cases, some of these tiny bubbles could be formed close enough together where they might have a brief chance to interact before the inflationary process separates them once again. And so if we assume that some bubbles form much closer, it might become possible to find certain types of evidence. Ok, sounds cool, but maybe so far really far-fetched. How can we possibly find evidence in any of this? Well, once again we have to look at that ancient light. Today it's believed that a lot of the afterglow inside the cosmic microwave background has the potential to show us what happened even before the universe became too big as it was developing right after the Big Bang. And several studies from approximately a decade ago established that by looking at the CMB we can potentially find certain signs of these previous universes interacting with one another. 
So basically a kind of a bubble collision, bubble interaction, and some sort of a bubble warping. But what exactly would it look like? It might just look like typical circular features that should not be there. Basically sort of like craters present inside the cosmic microwave background, but craters that would be otherwise unexplainable and would not really make sense unless something else extremely massive interacted with the universe. And in the last few years, there have been certain propositions with some of the studies potentially discovering up to four of these. Today these are referred to as the Hawking points, named after the iconic Stephen Hawking, and many scientists such as for example Roger Penrose do believe that these are maybe signs of interactions with other universes, evidence for the multiverse. But many other studies disagree and there's actually quite a lot of counter evidence providing a lot more explanations that you can learn more about in some of the links in the description. Basically it's either a result of human bias or in some cases a result of very large gravitational clusters. Anyway, nobody actually knows right now what caused this. So definitely not enough proof just yet. But there might be experimental way to prove this. And specifically there's maybe a way to design an experiment right here on planet Earth in order to then create a kind of a tiny multiverse just to observe the interactions with these hypothetical bubbles in order to then try to match it to physical observations from the cosmic microwave background. In other words, scientists have now started proposing creating a kind of a tiny multiverse right here on planet Earth just to then compare it to the observations from the oldest light in the universe. And though it might once again sound kind of far-fetched, the actual experiments turn out to be somewhat intriguing and they're based on physics that do make sense. And it once again takes us to the world of quantum physics. The physical laws that take over when things for example get extremely cold. And we know that when things turn quantum, things start to behave very differently. For example, there's the idea of quantum tunneling. Something jumps from one area to another without really doing anything in between. Okay, so this might get a little bit complicated, but bear with me. So the scientists here propose the following. First, because of the inflation in this case, they believe that the inflation cannot really produce true vacuum. But inside of this inflationary stuff, because of quantum fluctuations, the cosmos itself can tunnel through into a much lower energy state, producing a kind of a true vacuum, or in other words, forming a new universe. In other words, here the suggestion is that all of these bubbles form inside of this inflationary cosmos as a result of a kind of a quantum fluctuation that produces miniature vacuum bubbles. And sometimes these bubbles can form really closely and interact with one another. Now the actual math and physics behind this seem to make sense, but it's obviously a concept that's kind of difficult to understand. And though the math in this case might be sound, once again up until recently there was just no evidence or no way to provide evidence for any of this. It's a cool thought experiment, but that's about it. And that's until relatively recently when several scientists whose paper you can find in the description published an equation that seems to connect this to the unusual type of matter we discussed many times previously, Bose-Einstein condensate. The phenomenon that happens to a lot of different atoms when they reach extremely low pressure, but most importantly, very 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 cold temperatures, usually close to absolute zero. And that's essentially when a lot of these atoms start to slowly behave more and more like particles and eventually all of their waves sort of merge into one mega wave, creating one wave-like structure. This is what we refer to as the Bose-Einstein condensate and it basically creates a formation where different atoms act as a single object, a single quantum collective. This paper though was able to show that many of these Bose-Einstein condensates potentially form similar vacuum bubbles that can actually help us learn about the multiple universes as well. So basically they mathematically connected a microscopic world involving atoms assuming a quantum state to a macroscopic world involving these huge universe bubbles that once again might form because of quantum effects. And while well, extremely recently, one of the first attempts to recreate this was already conducted by the scientists from Italy. In this case by using ferromagnetic superfluids. And their experiment so far seemed to be kind of positive. They potentially saw these bubbles form appearing as individual lines inside their experiment. But they appear as lines because this is basically a one-dimensional experiment that does not possibly represent the actual universe just yet. In other words, they do show that something happens here on the quantum level 
with the formation of some kind of a bubble-like structure, but it's quite possible to interpret this experiment in maybe different ways. Still, an interesting first attempt. And because of the observations from this experiment, several other teams are already planning a new experiment, a more advanced version, potentially using at least two dimensions, in order to see if they actually get the same results. Here, the scientists want to use potassium atoms to once again create Bose-Einstein condensate. And once the cloud forms and starts to act as a single quantum particle, their math predicts that it should actually start forming these miniature vacuum states inside of it, lasting for several seconds. And at least mathematically, they seem to actually be very similar to the bubbles that form the universe, at least in the idea involving the inflation theory and the multiverse. Here they actually expect to observe exactly what happens to these vacuum bubbles, how they interact with one another, what they actually produce inside of one another, and also see the end of the bubbles as well. And it's really the interaction in this case that they're most interested in. Because by then seeing how these bubbles interact and comparing them to what potentially happened with the universe, the idea here is to then see if this is what we actually observe in the CMB as well. So if certain bubbles form in clusters, they might produce similar effects to what we theoretically might detect in the cosmic microwave background. With the results available in 2024, possibly helping us understand if there's anything in the CMB after all. Or if it's all just far-fetched and there's just one single universe. Intriguingly though, if there are discoveries in this case, it might also help us understand what happens to the universe at the end. It might also help us understand how the interaction between various universes might end up producing specific types of gravitational waves possibly detectable through various studies, and just generally explain why exactly the universe formed, how it evolved over time, and what the interaction with other bubbles might have done to it as well. So definitely big questions, potentially big answers, but still at the moment extremely hypothetical, and really nobody knows where any of this goes just yet. But honestly, this is a really exciting study, or at least a future experiment, and so far these preliminary results from the Italian study definitely make this a really exciting opportunity to possibly learn so much more about the universe than we ever could before. And so I'm definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this once the experiment itself starts, or once similar experiments from other scientists discover something else in the process. Either way though, just the fact that someone discovered a way to potentially study the entire multiverse by just studying the tiny effects inside super cold gas is already kind of mind-blowing. Although here, we obviously have to be really careful. Interpreting the results and trying to make the connections, that's going to be the hard part. This is actually where most of the arguments and most of the disagreements are very likely going to be taking place. But for now at least, cool stuff, cool ideas, and cool propositions. We'll discuss more in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.